Bani رضي الله تعالى عنه. Now a few words about the basic terminology about Quran. The unit of Quran is called ayah. We don't call it a sentence. We don't call it a verse. Some of the writers use this word for Quran, but as far as I think, we shouldn't use it. Neither the, the word sentence nor verse. We have to keep this word ayah. It's very unique. Ayah means a sign or a symbol. Actually, every ayah of Quran is a sign or symbol of the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we cannot substitute any other word in its place. We have to keep it, and because during this translation of the Quran, I'll be keeping this terminology. That is why I'm explaining in the very beginning. Ayat, ayat. But if ayat, you know, if there is full stop after that, we call it ayah. So these are fundamental things, you know. Ayah and ayat is the same, and the plural is ayat. Now ayat, you know, they are very small also, very large also. We have, you know, huruf mukattaat. They also go to make ayah. Ha mim, it is ayah. Alif lam mim, it is ayah. Then wal asr, it is ayah. Inna insan al fi khusu, it is again an ayah. And then there are ayat in which you can have ten sentences. Ayat al kursi, for example, a very big ayah, one of the biggest ayats of the Quran. So actually, these this these ayat, you know. They are not based on any grammatical or any other logical, only principle of logic or grammar. This is based on as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us, and we call it in this terminology taqifi. These umur, these matters are taqifi. They are maqouf alay on the telling of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As he told, we we accept it. No reason, no principle, no logic, no grammar. Now these ayat, you know, you may note here, there are about six thousand six hundred sixty-six. There is some difference in number, but round about six thousand and five hundred ayat of the Quran whole. Now these ayat, second term is surah, and the plural is suwar. But you know this word is because it's not commonly used. I'll be using the word surah and and surahs. During this translation, when we are translating into English, and what is surah? Surah is not a chapter. Please note these terms are not applicable to the Quran. These terms which we use about the books generally, sentences, paragraphs. There are no paragraphs in the Quran. Then there are no chapters. This is not chapter, because you know for every chapter of a book, there must be a certain topic. And the, that topic should be discussed in that chapter alone. It shouldn't be repeated in the second chapter, or again in the third chapter. But we find in the Quran that even the story of Adam and and Iblis it has been repeated in seven surahs of the Quran. So actually, it's a unique book. It's not the common book as we know the word book, human books. This is a unique book in itself, and it has its own compilation. Its own style, its own terminology. So ayat, then the ayat are joined together in surahs. There are 114 surahs of the Quran, and these surahs, you know, are very small also. Three surahs are there, who have only three ayat each. Walas inna insan ala fi khusr illa ladina amanu amil salihat wa tawasa bil haq wa tawasa bil sabr. Surah is complete. In the same way, in the Aqaynaqal Kausar, Fasalli Rabbi Kabalhar, in the Shaniya Kahu Alabtar, Surah is complete. And on the other hand, we find Surah Al-Baqarah, 286 ayat. And among these 286 ayat, there are certain ayat which are so long that Ayat Al-Kursi is at least three times bigger than Surah Al-Asr. So actually, these sizes are also dependent upon. What the Prophet Sallam told us: These are taqifi umur, not based on any logic, not based on any principle. The only principle is that the Prophet told us this is Surah Al-Baqarah, starts from here and here. This is Surah Al-Ibran, starts from here and here. It is small or large, big or small. It has nothing to do 
with any number, any size, any principle of grammar, but as far as the contents are concerned, there are principles. Every surah has a central theme. And all the ayat of that surah, they are connected with that central theme, logically. They are absolutely logical relationship. But you know, not as we find in our chapters. It's complete in itself, self-sufficient in itself. Then one point please note, and that is, most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in pairs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, a pair. In the same way, we, the, the Musaf ends with, Mu'awwazatain, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Very similar to each other. That's a pair. In the same way, Wa'adduha wa layli za saja, Alam nashah laka sadrak. The same thing being discussed in both the surahs. Addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally. It's a pair. Very apparently a pair. In the same way, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Ya ayyuhal muddassir, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Qubillah ila illa qalila. Ya ayyuhal muddassir, Qum fa'anzir. It is again a pair. So most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in pairs. Although there are surahs which are not in pairs. They are unique. They are munfarid. And most of such surahs are very important. But actually this, we shall be referring to these things during our translation. That is why I want to acquaint, acquaint you with this basic terminology.